Today I'm going to look at a modern replacement for the Commodore 1541 disk drive. Step in the Pi 1541, which is a real-time, cycle-exact Commodore 1541 disk drive emulator that runs on a Raspberry Pi. There are many versions of the Pi 1541 hat available, as we can see here with a quick Google image search. Some have a small OLED display, others don't. Some are bare boards, and some have some pretty snazzy looking injection molded cases. The particular version I'll be looking at today is made entirely out of PCBs, and is designed to resemble a 5.25 inch floppy disk. I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video and sending me the PCBs for this build. As well as being able to get your own custom PCBs manufactured by PCBWay, they also have this shared projects area that contains a ton of PCBs designed by other people that you can order. Back to the Pi 1541. I'll add the links to the description for anyone wanting to purchase the PCBs for this project. Note that there are three PCBs to purchase, the bottom, top, and the middle board that connects to the Pi itself. To build, follow the instructions on this GitHub page. Again, the link is in the description. However, don't get caught out with this four channel level converter. There are different types available, so make sure you order the one that has the same pinouts as shown in this photo. Let's jump into the build now. I went for the PCB in black, and here is the middle PCB that connects to the Pi. It has some brief build instructions on it, but I recommend you refer to the GitHub page throughout the assembly. Next, we have the top PCB. This gets the OLED display soldered to it and some pins to connect it to the middle PCB. Finally, there is a bottom PCB which can be assembled either way around. One side has a label on it, and the other side looks like the underside of a floppy disk. I want to stress the importance of selecting the correct type of this 4 channel level converter. As you can see here, I couldn't fit this one. The reason for this is that the pinouts on the one I had didn't match. So a quick eBay visit and a few days later and I was able to fit the replacement board. you'll notice me attacking one of the serial connectors with a knife. This is because a small piece of plastic fouls with the speaker, preventing it from being able to be installed. This is actually mentioned on the GitHub page, so just trim it down a little and then you're good to go.
Here is when I received the replacement 4 channel level converter. I had a little trouble with the pins being slightly too large to push through the holes in the PCB, so I trimmed them down in length and I soldered them in place from the top of the PCB. With the Pi 1541 now built, it was time to move on to making the cable. For this I used a short length of Cat 5E cable, and to make sure that I cabled both ends in the same way, I took a note of the colours I had used before soldering the other end. With the Pi 1541 and cable assembled, it's now time to download and install the software. To do this, head on over to this website, again the link is in the description. Note that there is no reference to a Pi 4, I used a Pi 3B Plus for this. Download the latest binaries from here. You'll need to format the micro SD card to FAT32, to do this you can use either the official SD card formatter or, as I did, use the Raspberry Pi imager. I used this since it was already installed on my machine. Then extract the contents of the downloaded zip file onto the micro SD card. Open the options.txt file and edit it to include these lines. Finally, copy any C64 floppy drive images to the folder 1541 that is on the micro SD card. In addition to all of your old school favourites, there is still a thriving C64 software development community around today. One place to purchase new C64 games is itch.io. Zeta Wing, Sam's Journey and TinyQuest 
are all games that I've purchased in the last year and thoroughly enjoy. Use the up and down buttons to browse through the list of disk images and press select to insert the desired disk image into the emulated drive. For multi-disk games such as Sam's Journey, browse to each disk image in turn and press the add button. Finally, navigate to the first disk image and press the select button. Notice how I now have a list of four disks. Right, time to load the game. Since I'm using an action replay cartridge, I just hit F7, followed by F1, and then return. Now, when the game prompts for the second disc, on the Pi 1541, just highlight it with the up or down keys. Don't press any other button on the Pi 1541. Then, on the Commodore 64, acknowledge that the next disc has been inserted into the disk drive. And for anyone who hasn't yet seen Sam's Journey, before I go on, I'm going to play a few minutes of it here.
I also wanted to show you a couple of other games loading on the Pi 1541. The first is Tiny Quest. This is a platform runner in which you have a limited time to get from the left hand side of the screen to the right hand side and you must also collect the coin on the way. The timer countdown is shown as energy hearts on the top left of the screen. The final game I wanted to show loading is Zeta Wing, which is a vertical shoot 'em up. Thanks for watching, I hope it inspired you to build your own Pi 1541. Please do hit the like button to keep the algorithm happy with me and if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified of new videos.